What's going on everybody? I'm back with another APA 8 ball match of mine and this time I'm up against a skill level 6. Now with me being a skill level 7 this is going to be a race to 5-4 with me going to 5 and my opponent going to 4. So sit back and enjoy the match and I'll see you when it's over. Okay, let's see who's going to win the lag and break first. Alright, I won the lag, so let's see how my first classic break goes. And I got the head ball to go right into the side pocket, as predicted. So since I only made a solid on the break, pocketing the one ball, I am now solids. And I can already see the two ball is going to be my issue, so I have to be able to develop a plan to be able to deal with it. My first opening shot will be the four ball in the side pocket, and I'm just going to allow the cue ball to just roll over and bump into the 11 ball, and that'll give me shape on the five ball. Now I actually wanted the cue ball to draw back a little bit farther. That way I can cut the three ball in and possibly break out my two ball. And if I'm lucky and don't have position on the two ball afterwards, hopefully my seven ball would be a backup. Now I have to try to come up with something a little bit different if I want to break out my two ball. And I noticed that I can actually do that with the 7 ball. Now with this position on the 7 ball, I can make it in the lower right hand corner pocket and with a little bit of bottom left spin, I can draw the cue ball in between the 15 and the 14, hit the side rail and then come back and try to break out my 2 ball. except I didn't want that kind of breakout. Now from here, I'm in no type of position to play some sort of safety. So what you see me measuring up is to try to do a 2-6 combination and get that 6 ball to fall in the lower left corner pocket. And I nailed it! Now here you see me checking for a good position to leave the cue ball after pocketing the two ball so that I can shoot the eight. Now normally you're supposed to mark the pocket you plan on playing the eight ball in. But at this local level here, the higher ranking players usually agree to just call it. But when we play at the city or the national event, it doesn't matter what rank you're at, you have to mark the pocket with some sort of personal object. And I start the match off with a break and run.
Well, rack two starts off with the dry break, so let's see what my opponent decides to do. My opponent claims stripes, making me solids once again, but I don't think he meant to bump that 14 ball and tie it up next to the 1 ball. Now I've got my work cut out for me there's three different clutters that are on the table. The 1 and the 14, the 4 and the 10, and the 6 and the 11. Unfortunately, my opening shot on the 5 ball allows me to free up the 6 ball, and that's what I'm going to try to do with a little bit of draw on the cue ball. Now I broke the 6 out, but I certainly wasn't expecting the 11 ball to come that close to the 7 ball. It can still go in the upper left corner pocket, but the window between the 8 and 11 is now a lot smaller and makes position a little bit harder to play for. From here, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the 6 into the side pocket and draw back to play the 2 ball in the same side pocket. And here you see me checking how small that window is for position on the 7 ball. And I don't like it. So I'm going to play the 2 ball into the side pocket and play position for the 3 ball so that way I can try to break out my 1 ball next. And just like before, not exactly the breakout I was looking for. I would have rather not have the one ball roll so far, that way I can possibly try to cut it into the side pocket. Now here you're going to see me think about what to do for a moment. So I got to ask, what would y'all do in this position? because I ended up trying caroming the one ball off of the 12 so that it has the necessary angle to run into the 13 ball and then hopefully fall into the corner pocket. Whew. And that was pretty close. Now you might be wondering why didn't I just try shooting the one ball directly into the 13 and have it carom into the corner pocket. Well that's because the four ball was actually blocking that path enough, which is the reason why I tried to carom off the 12 instead. Now there's no reason for me to try to play the one ball anywhere, because I can't get position on the seven ball, nor can I break out my four ball. So I'm going to pocket my opponent's 13 ball with my one ball, replacing it. That way I can use it as a breakout shot for my four ball.
Now it looks like my opponent tried to play some sort of safety, but I think he would rather the cue ball be where the 15 ball is at, so that way I can't use my one ball as a breakout shot for the four ball. Because from this position here, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And this time, a breakout shot works well for me. Because now from here, I can play the 7 ball into the corner pocket and get position on the 4 ball to finally get position on the 8 ball and win this rack. Let's see if I can get a better break on rack 3. And I dropped two stripes on the break, and the rest of the stripes look good. Now my opening shot is going to be to play the 11 ball into the side pocket and get position on the 13 ball in such a way that I can pull the cue ball back and get position on either the 9 or the 14 ball. Because at this point, I've already decided that the 10 ball is going to be my last ball that I try to use to get position on the 8 ball. But my plan doesn't matter if I miss. Fortunately from this position, my opponent doesn't have a whole lot he can do here. Well thanks for making my ball, but I don't think my opponent wanted that one ball to roll away from the corner pocket. And he also wanted the cue ball to go up a little bit farther so that way I can't even try to play the 10 ball into this corner pocket. I would have rather have gotten straighter on the 9 ball because from here now I have to make sure that the cue ball bumps the 14 ball closer to the left corner pocket that way I can still have a shot at it. Here I am again, checking to see where's a good spot that I can try to leave the cue ball so I can have a shot on the 8 ball. Now I really wanted that cue ball to come much farther off the side rail so I can have an easier shot on the 8 ball. Because even though this shot is doable, it's just a little bit harder than it could have been. Luckily with my opponent's balls nearby, I don't really have to worry about scratching. So I can hit the cue ball a little bit harder because I'm going to be cutting this 8 ball really thin. And I actually overcut it. Now if any of you are ever in this position like my opponent, the best advice I can give you is if you don't feel like you can run the table, then don't try to run the table. Just play a couple of shots and then play some sort of defensive shot which forces me to try to hit my 8 ball. Because if I fail to do so, you get ball in hand. And let alone, if I scratch, you win the game.
because right here, it's probably in my opponent's best interest to play some sort of safety using the 5 ball. Well, since he got that, he's actually in a position where he can try to win the game from here because he can play the 6 ball off of the 8 to go into the corner pocket and getting the 8 ball out of the way of the 1 ball. But it looks like he elected to play a safe. Now the 8 ball can't be cut into the corner pocket, but I call it anyway because I'm going to try to double kiss the 8 ball into the corner pocket by having it hit the rail and then come back and hit the cue ball and then hopefully still try to go into the pocket. Clearly my opponent shot his last ball too hard. He would rather be shooting the 8 ball in the upper right hand corner pocket rather than cross banking it into the side pocket. Lucky for me, my opponent leaves me a free shot on the 8 ball. Ah, another dry break. Now because my opponent missed their opening shot, the table is still open, and I have a choice to make. And I actually like stripes better than I do solids, I just don't have an open shot at any of the stripes on the table. However, since the table is still open, I can actually do a mixed combination by shooting a solid into a stripe. And that's what I'm going to do. So I claimed stripes, but I also tied up my 10 ball with that 2 ball getting in the way. Now I hesitated here because I thought I was going to try to draw off the 12 ball to break out my 10 ball, and then I realized I actually can't do that because the cue ball is going to hit the top rail. So instead, I'm going to draw back for the 13 ball and then use the 13 ball to break out the 10 ball. Another successful breakout. Now here, I decided the 10 ball will be the last ball before the 8 ball. Because right there, after checking that the 9 ball can go into the side pocket, I'm going to shoot the 15 ball into the side pocket and get position for the 9 ball to go into the same side pocket and then from the 9 get position on the 10 ball to go into the upper right corner pocket which then allows me to play the 8 ball into the upper left corner pocket.
and I'm now on the hill, needing only one more game to win the match. Now I've explained before that whenever I need one more rack to win the match, I try to end it with an 8-ball break. No such luck there, but I did at least drop a solid on the break. Now looking at the lay of the table, the 3-ball and the 6-ball are my issue being next to that 8-ball. And I've mentioned before that whenever there's a trouble spot on the table, you want to try to deal with it as soon as possible if you're able to. And in this position, I'm actually able to, because I'm going to try to draw off of the 2-ball and break out the 6-ball. Whoa! I certainly wasn't expecting that because I almost lost the game. Now what do y'all do here? Because I'm in break and run mode and I don't want to give my opponent a chance at the table. spend a little bit of time really trying to think about what I'm going to do with that 3 and 6 ball. And then I decided to play the 5 ball in the lower left corner pocket and try to get position on the 1 ball to go into the lower right corner pocket. That way I can try to break out the 3 and the 6 using the 1 ball. Okay, let's see if I can break out the 3 and the 6 without knocking in the 8 ball. Well now what do I do? Well, I decided to go ahead and play the four ball and try to get the cue ball to go down table and then back up the table so that way I can hit the six ball and play some sort of defensive shot. But I fell short coming back up the table and now I have to kick at the six ball. Oh, my heart was racing on that one because I clearly did not see the cue ball catching the point of the side pocket and then coming all the way back around like it was going to knock in the eight ball, but instead it ends up scratching. Well, my opponent has ball in hand and a wide open table, so what pattern would y'all play to try to win this game? Because if it were me, I would have started with the 9 ball. That was a good bank shot by my opponent.
Now here, I actually have a clear path to the three ball to go into the upper right corner pocket. And I'm well aware that my cue ball is going to run into the nine ball afterwards. And because of that, I'm not even worried that I might accidentally knock in the eight ball. Because the angle that I'm actually going to hit the nine ball is going to cause the cue ball to start rolling towards the six ball. And I'm actually hoping that it rolls far enough to where I can shoot the six ball into the upper left corner pocket. But I wasn't expecting the 9 ball to come back and hit the cue ball because now I'm hooked and I can't see the 6 ball. Here I'm looking to see if a 1 rail kick option is available and it's not. So I'm actually going to try to go two rails to be able to hit the six ball. There I saw another player coming around to take their next shot on the table next to us, and I saw they had no intention of pausing for my shot, so I waited until they finished their shot. And I was way off on trying to hit that six ball. Now I have no words for what you're about to see here soon. It was at this moment he knew. He f***ed up. <laughs> I completely spaced out and forgot I still had the six ball on the table after the cue ball was lined up for the eight ball when my opponent missed with ball in hand. And with that goof, I now blew my chances at scoring a 3-0 and winning a Rackless patch. Now after recomposing myself for making a dumb mistake like that, I come to the table to shoot solids. And I already see that my 2 ball and my 4 ball are going to be an issue, but I can at least use the 7 ball to break them out. So the first thing I'm going to do is shoot the 1 ball into the side pocket and then play position for the 7 ball. Now I stopped here because I changed my mind. Instead of shooting the seven ball now, I'm actually gonna play the six ball into the side pocket so that way I can push the three ball down towards the lower left corner pocket. That will still give me position for the seven ball to break out the two and the four. But if I don't have a position shot on the two or the four, hopefully the three ball will be a backup ball. And it's a good thing I changed my mind on that last shot 
because my three ball does become a backup shot. However, what in the world am I now going to do with my four ball since it's tied up next to the eight ball and all those stripes? Well, I'm in aggressive mode at this point, so here I'm checking to see if the 4 ball can go off of the 12 ball to go into the upper left corner pocket. But since it can't, I still decided to stay aggressive and I tried to cut cross bank the 5 ball into the left side pocket and get the cue ball to go down table and back up table to break my 4 ball out. And I ended up miscuing the cue ball. Same question here. With ball in hand, what do y'all think my opponent should do? Now I really can't tell if the 12-9 or the 14 ball are playable with this camera angle, but if they are, I certainly would start there. That wasn't a bad play. It looks like he was trying to run the cue ball into the clutter and spread them open after making the 11 ball. That was a good attempt at banking the 14 ball into the right side pocket. And now from this position, there's not really a whole lot I can do. My only option that I see is to try to make my opponent's 13 ball using my 5 ball. That way the 5 ball will have a path to the upper right corner pocket. I didn't make my opponent's 13 ball, but I at least got it out of the way. Okay everybody, with ball in hand, how do you break this four ball out? Because I decided to play the 5 ball in the upper right corner pocket and have the cue ball come off the top rail and try to break the 4 ball out from behind. And I didn't quite get the breakout that I wanted. Now what you see here is that the cue ball is actually really close to the four ball with a small gap in between them. So I'm elevating the back of my cue this high because I don't want to commit a foul by double hitting the cue ball.
Now at the time, I actually thought I executed it okay. But now after seeing the replay and seeing how the cue ball actually reacted, I do believe I actually double hit the cue ball and fouled. And my opponent should have had ball in hand. Would y'all agree with that? And with that missed shot, I can now play the four ball in the lower right corner pocket and get position for the eight ball to go in the upper right corner pocket. And there you have it, everybody. I was able to win my match 5-1 to one in 13 innings, all because of a silly mistake of me forgetting about my 6-ball and knocking in the 8-ball early. Now what's really funny about that is, as my opponent was taking their turn with ball in hand, one of my skill level 4s was joking around with me and letting me know to call on them for a timeout on my next shot. And after my opponent missed their ball in hand shot, I jokingly responded and said, I'll take that timeout right now and walked right up to the table and just knocked the eight ball in. And the look on everybody's faces when I did that was hilarious, just as mine was when I realized that I forgot about my six ball and I had lost that rack. So if there's anything that you're supposed to take away from this match, it's pay attention to the table and don't make the same mistake I did. So if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.